In the panel of Western 50 Classical Studies for Clarinet, there's a piece by Demnitz, number 17. And this is a good piece for, you know, the kind of uh, intermediate, maybe advanced beginner level. It is full of D minor. So if the student has just learned D minor scale, this is a great piece for them. It's full of D minor, so if they ever wanted any reason or any example of why scales are a good idea, this piece is it. So we'll give it a go. So I'm going way too fast. This is in Dante con moto, so I don't want to put anyone off here. It's really meant to be what's a walking pace. So Dante is a walking pace, so about the speed. But it's con moto, so with movement. So we've got a little bit more, you know, brisk walking pace. So really it's not actually that fast. lots of articulation here so if you were to make a good performance of this you have to take careful attention to the articulation we have a staccato up then a tenuto which in this edition for some reason is kind of cropped in the editing so it's like this tiny little stubby thing but it's meant to be a long tenuto bum, bum. so we're slurring da, staccato bum, bum, bum. this is more a stylistic thing but when I do my tenutos in a piece like this, I like to lean into it. I think of tenuto as something is happening in the middle of the note. There are a bunch of tick marks in this edition where they have, generally the tick marks are compulsory breaths at this point. They're like compulsory phrase starts or phrase ends, phrase starts. They don't make too much sense to me in this piece because they're so hemmed in there and it makes much... Uh, more f it makes it seems more fluid if it just keeps on going. Then we keep going. So at that point, what we got? We got a. What is that? That is the dominant chord of the D minor scale. So we are now A, C sharp, E. So again, this is a great piece to show the student. Oh look, here's a D minor scale, but oh, here's the dominant, which we then resolve back to tonic, D, F, A, A, C sharp, E. So it's a good piece for that. Um... <laughs> So again, you can hear the character of this piece. Very short staccato. Now, this is a classical piece, so arguably it shouldn't be as aggressive as I'm playing it, but you know, I'm, I'm having fun with it. You should too. You can put on your classical hat if you want, but sometimes it's good just to be a bit rough and dirty. Uh, <laughs> So now we have smooth passage, suddenly duck down the piano. Okay, I got a bit too carried away and forgot to do my pianos and four days and crescendos and things. But what I did have was big, huge, long phrases. You want to start and you want the air to just keep on moving and moving and moving and moving. And the piece continues. Now I did that all in one breath, which is probably not a good idea because sometimes it does 
keep on going and going and going and going a little bit unless you taper phrases out and sneak back in again. So be, feel free to stick in some breaths. But what I'm getting at is you don't want to be breathing every bar or else you kind of get that hyperventilated feel. All right, so the chin head started again. So listen to that ending. A whole bunch of team minor PGOs. Okay, so there we go. This is a piece that you give your student just after you've given them like a boring D minor scale and say, oh, now play this piece. <laughs>